Hello my friends, it's Bruins here, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the maximum number of RGB points in each family member's skill tree and also what are the random perks that each of them can get. Obviously if you go for max attribute points build then it will potentially lock you into a certain playstyle due to the perks you will get. So you will have to make a decision if this kind of build is right for you. A lot of research went into this and I really learned a lot from this process so I hope you guys enjoy this. If you do please drop me a like, consider subscribing and joining the channel to support more content like this i do appreciate it also a few considerations family trees are a lot more interesting than victims and by that i mean that each family member have unique perks for themselves whilst the victims share several perks amongst themselves and none of them have unique perks. Also family have grandpa perks which adds a whole new layer of complexity into their trees. I do find the family have the worst kind of perks and some are shockingly useless and some of those terrible ones are also random to some characters. And a final consideration before we start is that some great perks for each character are behind a tree pathway where they will get less attribute points. However, there are a few family members that have really great perks on the side of the tree where they get the most attribute points so it can be a win-win case okay let's talk about leatherface first so in order for you to get the max number of attribute points with leatherface you need to go left first all the way through and then the next time you need to make a choice you go left again and then the final time you need to make a choice you can go either way if you go right you're gonna get chicken whisperer where chickens will not generate noise if you are spotted and also you're gonna get a random perk if you go left you're gonna get another random perk and you're gonna get a grandpa perk brute strength it slightly increases the melee damage for all family members we don't know how much the increase is but i'll take it so if you're going on this, this side of the tree you can really be bumping up your damage by an extra 50 percent and i'll show you why so violent if it's on level three your damage will increase by 20 percent when you're carrying a full blood vial and that's what you want to do so i will be collecting the blood from the buckets but i will never feed grandpa because really what i want here is just maximize the damage and then if you equip big swings your attack damage is also increased by 15 percent but stamina consumption tied to attacks is 200 more costly and we all know that leatherface doesn't use any stamina when he's attacking so this on level 3 will increase your damage by 15 percent we don't know how much brute strength increases damage for but i'm gonna assume that it's maybe five to ten percent so if we say it's five percent here here, another 15 percent 20 percent another 20 percent here is 40 percent then we know if you are revving your chainsaw to the max that will increase your damage as well and that's how you take your damage nearer the 50 percent now there is a visual bug here where you put a perk that will increase a certain attribute and then you put more points on it it gets past 50 points this is just a visual bug this is not real i've already tested it so if you think you're getting 57 savagery or 57 stealth or whatever it is, it's not true. That's not what's happening. This is just a visual bug. So don't waste your points on that. So what I'm specking on Letterface is I'm just having three extra points on savagery and then the rest I'm putting on endurance, 15 points there and the rest into blood harvesting. That means that my blood harvest is gonna sit at 100. Once I kill a victim, that's gonna be full. 100 we know it levels up grandpa. So I'm probably gonna hold on to that because of violent and I'm only gonna use that on a last instance if I really wanna bump up grandpa to level five or maybe someone stab grandpa and I wanna get some levels back on grandpa. Otherwise, I'm gonna hold on to the blood. So this is the only path on the tree that is gonna grant you with 30 attribute points. All the other paths are gonna grant you 29, 28 or 27. So really, this is a very strong build. If you get really good at one-shotting victims with other face, this is the build to go for and that is the side of the tree to go for on the other side of the tree here what you will be missing are perks that will increase your endurance and also your movement speed so there are some really good ones here such as scout where your movement speed is increased by 15 percent but melee damage is reduced by 10 percent i also really like fired up after running out of stamina there's a 90 percent less delay before stamina starts regenerating again but because he doesn't use stamina for his attack this is not too much of a requirement on the face you can get rubber boots as well which i really like where on level three you're immune to electrify cattle grids and the generator starts with only one pull so this is really good when you're going after those victims that are just teabagging or you're just waiting just past the grid because you've already switched it on and just they're just there chilling just waiting for the teammates and they're not expecting this and i've seen so many videos of victims getting killed because they didn't leave when they had a chance so victims if you're watching this just leave when you can <laughs> don't wait around because chances are you could get killed with regards leatherface's random perks he can get 
activated, where on level 3, after being stunned, you deal 20% extra damage for 40 seconds. He gets confusing mechanic, which is absolutely terrible. Level 3, after turning a generator, it takes 15 seconds longer than usual for victims to disable it. I mean, if they disabled it once, it's very likely that one or two of them will escape. The other ones will probably escape on a different route because you're going to be patrolling that generator as if your life depended on it. So this is pretty useless and I don't think I will ever use this. You also get hysterical strength where on level 3 when below 15% stamina you deal 20% more damage. He also gets punishment where on level 3 after finding a victim in a hiding spot 50 extra points of damage will be dealt. Now we know the hiding spots they are wardrobes, they are containers and they are also high foliage. So this could be a very good perk to equip because most of the victims are playing stealthily and a lot of the time they will be hiding in the bushes so by dealing 50 extra points of damage, this could actually do a lot of damage to them. He also gets Special Blend, where on level 3, walking through Sissy's Poison Clouds boosts your stamina regeneration by 50% for 30 seconds and gives your next one attack a poison effect. Very situational, you have to have a Sissy in your team, so I'm not sure I will be using this much. Also because he doesn't need that much stamina. Tenderizer, on level 3, slamming a door on a victim will deal 35 damage. Now if you didn't know, the family can also slam doors on victims and I have actually done this quite a few times. All you need to do is hold the sprint button and then just press the button to open the door and you will slam the door on them. So when they're playing that game with you, you can also play the game with them and guess what? You could win that game. Don't think I'll be using this much anyway because I don't like all that door slamming thing. And you can also get Violent, which this is definitely a must. This is the one random perk you need to get on Leatherface, where on level 3 your damage is increased by 20% when carrying a full blood vial. Okay, let's move on to Cook now. So on Cook's tree, the first thing you want to do is you want to go right, and then the next time you want to go right again, then you want to go left up here, and then finally you can go either way. So if you go right here, you're going to get a random perk. If you go left here, you get Universal Donor, where on level 3, blood collected from buckets is increased by 40%. Now Cook is a support character, right? He will spot victims for his teammates, and he can also do some blood runs in the meantime. So by having this on cook plus if you boost his blood harvest by a few points you can really do blood runs with only three buckets. So I would definitely recommend you take this tree path here so that you can play the support role which is what cook is. The other really good thing about going this way down the tree is that you're gonna get two very good perks from grandpa. So first is well 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 where victims that jump down wells take 50% more damage and let's be honest that's gonna be happening every game and you also get wind doom victims take 50% more damage when jumping out of windows. So if you're playing Family House map, I'll probably use Wind Doom. If you're playing any other map, I'll probably use Well, Well, Well. Obviously, what you're missing by not going the other side of the tree are some mobility perks for Cook, such as Scout. You're also going to be missing down the rabbit hole, where on level 3, victims who climb down wells will be highlighted for 17 seconds. This is a bit broken. It doesn't proc every time, but I quite like it when it does, because it means as one victim is jumping down the well the other family member could already be going down and then you know exactly where to go and you could potentially kill them that way you'll be missing out on fired up you're also going to be missing out on security pins which is a unique perk for cook where on level three other locks are 50 percent harder to unlock for victims obviously connie could bypass this by using her ability so the loader that i have been using is mostly universal donor and then at times i am using prey drive where spotting a victim increases stamina recharge by 40% for 15 seconds and this could actually compensate for all the mobility perks that you're going to be missing by not going the other side of the tree and then I also am using siphon where your blood harvesting is increased by 7 on level 3 and I'm only using this because if I can bump up my blood harvest by using a perk that's going to save me enough points to put into endurance because I got no perks for endurance so you can see here that by going on this side of the tree you get 33 attribute points and that is massive actually and you have to be careful because Cook can get very little attribute points, actually as little as 22 attribute points if you're going a side of the tree that has less attribute points to unlock. So watch out for that. I really think this is optimum for him, but it requires a certain playstyle. With regards to his random perks, Cook can also get activated. He can get Battering Ram, where on level 3 when barging a door, each consecutive hit is stronger by 80%. 
very situational, don't think I'll be using this much. It gets confusing mechanic, which you can also skip. It gets insulated, where on level 3, booby trapped lamps do not stun you. I have not been stunned by lamps at all so far, so maybe the devs will change that in the game at some point, but this you can just skip for now. You also can get punishment like Leatherface, so this could be a really good one to use. It gets serrated, which is a very good perk. Victims hit by the perk holder take 1 HP per second of extra damage for the next 5 seconds. It's not massive on cook because you're not going to be going after the victims as much, but if you do get a few hits on them, you could boost up your damage. You could standardizer, which you could also skip. It gets track attacked, where hitting a victim highlights them for all family members and the highlight duration is 5 seconds. This is probably good for solo queue, where you're not communicating. And he also gets you pay for that, where on level 3, if grandpa is incapacitated, your damage dealt to victims is increased by 25% until he recovers. Very situational, Grandpa will get incapacitated most games, but because Cook is gonna just be spotting victims for the other family members, then it's unlikely he's gonna be in the middle of the action. So I'm not sure about this perk. Okay, so moving on to Hitchhiker. Now, Hitchhiker, the way to get the most attribute points on his tree is you want to go up in the middle, and then the next time you wanna make a right, and then you wanna make a right again, and at the end, it doesn't matter which way you go, you're gonna get the same amount of attributes. So if you go left here at the end, you're gonna get a random perk, and then you also are gonna get swinging for the fences, reduces stamina consumption on melee. If you go right, you're gonna get always in sync, so when active, the family focus ability duration is increased and the cooldown is reduced. You can get also a random perk, and here I got Scout, which was lucky. And you're also gonna get an extra perk here called Track Attack. So it just depends really what you going for this could be good on hitchhiker now the downside of going for this side of the tree is that you are going to be missing on wireframe and this is a unique perk that hitchhiker gets and it is a very good one where on level 3 you can traverse gaps 40% faster and crawl spaces 60% faster it's actually huge so you will be missing on this and another one you'll be missing is fired up which I also really like another one that you will be missing that I really like is venom where victims caught in traps take 1 HP of extra damage per 30 seconds for 30 seconds so it's an extra 30 points of health that they will lose after being caught in a trap so they could actually die if you spec into bleed damage on his ability tree where any victim caught in traps continues to take damage over a short period of time so you're going to be missing a few cool perks in order to get the max number of attribute points so the max number of attribute points that i got here with hitchhiker is 32 going this side of the tree so if you go any other side you're going to get something like 25 26 27 28 so you have to think if it's worth sacrificing some really good perks for an extra seven attribute points it might not be worth it so i'll just think about this before making a decision however if you are going to use max number of attribute points on this side of the tree then i will advise you to try and get a scout track attack can be very good because it can help you gang up on victims and also violent this will increase your damage by 20 percent as you know so if you put all your attribute points on savagery and you have your blood vial full you are going to be doing a lot of damage and I think I had a game the other day where I did five swings on a victim and they were dead. But then again, Violent is also a random perk, like Scout. So you could go a separate path on the tree and still get the very good perks, a few less attribute points and still get Scout and Violent. Now about his random perks, he can get Confusing Mechanic, which is trash. He can also get Dinner Bell, where on level 3 victims caught in traps will be highlighted and your maximum stamina is increased by 60 points for 15 seconds. You can get down the rabbit hole, which I like. You can get easily tuckered out. Scout, which is very good. Everybody's running this. This is very strong on level 3, not so good on level 1. You can get special blend, which I don't rate. Universal donor, in case you decide to do some blood runs. And also violent, which I think is really good. So Hitchhiker can also get some very good perks. And even some very good blood harvesting perks. So if you wanted to spec into blood harvesting with him, you could do. Lots of options with him. Moving on to Johnny. So the way to maximize 
nice attribute points on Johnny's skill tree. First, you have to go right. And then the next time you gotta go left. And then after that, you do have to go right again. And finally, at the end, it doesn't really matter. You can go either way and you're gonna get the same amount of attribute points. Now, the thing about going this pathway is that Johnny's gonna get a lot of random perks. And he actually can get some pretty good perks, I have to say. So by going this way on the tree with Johnny, you obviously will get perks like Fired Up and then you will also get perks like Unrelenting, which will increase your endurance. The great thing about going this way on the tree as well is that you're gonna get grandpa perks such as Wind Doom. And if you go right at the end, you can also get Well, Well, Well. If you go left here, you can get Experienced Stalkers, which reduces the family's proximity warning range for victims, which I guess it could be good. You get a random perk on both sides. And I got here Universal Donor. So Johnny doesn't have a lot going for him, right? So it's all about his perks, really. And the reason I think speed is good for Johnny is because you can do the speed tech for now. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's meant to be, but by swinging your attacks whilst you're sprinting and you're not hitting anyone, it's gonna get you to sprint faster. So one perk here that you're missing is Hysterical Strength if you go right on this side, which on level three, when below 15% stamina, you deal 20% more damage, but it's quite situational as well, so I'm not sure about this one. You will miss Punishment, where after finding a victim in a hiding spot, 20 extra points of damage will be dealt and Johnny, he is a tracker. So this could come in handy in a separate build. You will also miss on his unique perks such as Patience, which standing still will reduce your ability consumption rate by 40%. Not too keen on that. You're also going to miss out on Easily Tuckered Out. You're also missing out on Feral, which will increase your savagery by 7 and because Johnny is such a high damage dealer, this could come in handy otherwise. I think I prefer being more mobile with Johnny, but there you have it. So the build I've got for Johnny at the moment is fired up together with scouts and then blood runner where stamina consumption is reduced by 15% when carrying a blood vial that is more than 50% full so it's all about making him cross the map as fast as possible that side of the tree will grant you with 30 attribute points and that's the max you can get with johnny so on my build i put everything on savagery because that's what i feel he will need it the most put 10 points on endurance just so he can keep on running and i haven't put anything on blood harvest because although Although Johnny can get some really good blood harvesting perks, I just don't think he is the character to be doing the blood runs. In terms of his random perks, he can get eight of them and they are blood banker which on level three your maximum blood storage capacity is increased by 30 percent so unless you're going for that kind of build i wouldn't use this you can get chicken whisperer you can get dinner bell mm, not too sure about this one as well you can get down the rabbit hole which as you know is one of my favorites you can get scout which is a very strong perk so you definitely want this one on your build if you're going for mobility you can get serrated which is another fantastic perk to have on level 3, victims hit by the perk holder take 1 HP per second of extra damage for the next 5 seconds. You can get Surgical. On level 3, you receive 100% more blood when attacking victims. Again, it's for that kind of build. And you can get Universal Donor. One more perk for blood harvesting. So you could really do something different with Johnny here and build him all around blood harvesting. You're playing with the Leatherface and with the Cook who are not doing any of the blood harvesting. You could do it. Or maybe Sister's got a different build and she's not going for the blood collection maybe you could do it who knows it's all about experimenting right okay final family member sissy so there are two pathways that you can take with sissy that will grant you a max of 27 attribute points and to be completely honest i'm not too keen on both of them but here we go so both pathways to 27 attribute points you have to go up first and then you can go either way and then on the next time you have to make a choice you have to either go up or you have to go right if you go up you have the chance to get a random perk and you also get suffocating grip where closing counter minigame is easier by 20% for the perk holder. I'm not too sure about this and I have heard of people using this and not feeling it's made any difference. If you go straight up here, you have to go right at the end, which will take you to Efficient Herbalist, which is one of my all-time favorite perks on CC. With Efficient Herbalist, poisoning an object has a 75% chance to not consume any powder. That means you can literally poison everything in the map and never run out of powder. So if you don't go up here and you go right, you're gonna get fired up. And then at the end here, you have to go left. So that will take you again to Efficient Herbalist and to all these extra attribute points. So what are you missing out on here if you don't take 
the other parts. You are missing out on Scout, which is one of the best perks on the family at the moment. You are also missing out on Rubber Legs, where your Toxic Cloud and Poison items slow victims down by 20%. And we know that this was broken when being used with other perks. This is a very good unique perk, and I think it will still hinder victims. And then you will also miss out on Spore Loser, where losing a close encounter automatically drops an emergency poison cloud even if you're out of powder and the cooldown is 30 seconds. So these are all very good perks that you're gonna be missing out for the sake of an extra four attribute points. So something to think about, but I think going this way on the tree still really works on CC. So what I'm currently running on her is Fired Up and then Efficient Herbalist and I am running Serrated at the moment because that means if I can get one hit on the victims, I will be dealing an extra five points of damage for the next five seconds. That can increase your damage a little bit, but if you point all of her attribute points into Savagery, that will take your Savagery up to 37, but that can make Sissy really, really strong. It still means you can do some blood runs, especially after you kill victims, you're gonna be full of blood, so you could just take that to Grandpa and level him up. But like I said, this is probably not my favorite side of the tree for her. What I really like to do with Sissy is to just go right here to get Universal Donor, and then you can get Scout, and then you can still get Efficient Herbalist at the end. And that's optimum for Sissy, I think. However, that will only grant you with 25 APs, which is only two less than what I'm showing you here at the moment. So not a huge sacrifice. Any path going left on Sissy will also grant you 25 APs. So not terrible as well. You're only sacrificing two APs. So if you still want to go for Rubber Legs and Spore Loser, you won't be losing out on much. Okay, let's talk about her random perks. So Sissy can get activated, where she will deal 20% extra damage for 40 seconds. She can get big swings, where on level three attack damage is increased by 15% at the cost of stamina. So I'm not too keen on this for Sissy. She can get Chicken Whisperer in case you want to be a little bit stealthier when walking around chickens. She can get Confusing Mechanic as well, which will pass down the rabbit hole. As you know, I like it. You can run this on her. I just hope they fix this soon. She can get Dracula and Dracula actually is the only random perk that she can get, which is also on her tree. With Dracula, winning a close encounter gives you 70% more blood while losing a close encounter gives you 40 blood. It can be good, quite situational. I wouldn't discard it. And then Sissy can get Special Blends and then she can get Tenderizer, which which will deal some damage to victims on slamming doors and I don't really like this. Okay guys, so this was a lot, lot of information and I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's a lot to digest here and you might have to watch this video more than once so that you can have the full grasp of the skill tree of each family member. If you watched the video until now, please drop me a like, it helps massively. Also consider subscribing or even joining the channel for more perks. It will help to support more content like this. Thank you so much to the members, praise GBuzz and one trick Wu-Tang. You guys are amazing. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.